Hi and welcome. So today I want to share with you a little bit more about why intuitive eating might not be the best approach for you as an emotional eater. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist and emotional eating expert. And I wanted to share more on this topic um, because I find that sometimes when we are just discovering we're an emotional eater, we've tried so many different methods and ways of moving through this pattern, not really understanding where it comes from. And that's why we end up doing things like intuitive eating and um, sort of still not finding that deeper solution. And so I just want to preface this by saying I am not against intuitive eating. I think it is an amazing philosophy. There are some really good takeaways from it, but I think as a whole, it doesn't address all of the key areas that we need to look at as an emotional eater. And it doesn't give us enough structure or guidance to really help us move through this pattern. And so, you know, when I was moving through my own emotional eating journey, uh, you know, I started off not really knowing what was happening to me. I just thought I was really out of control around food, that I was constantly hungry. And so I tried all the typical things, the diets, exercise plans. I even saw a nutritionist and I just never felt good. And I actually swung to the other extreme where I threw all the rules out the window. I just ate whatever I wanted. I just didn't know anymore how to listen. I didn't even know how to listen to my body. If you ask me what hunger felt like, I wouldn't really know. And I was just so sick of restricting myself with diets that I threw everything out the window. And to me, you know, this was back when I didn't even know what intuitive eating was. I don't even know. Maybe it, you know, it wasn't really mainstream back then. And so I went from one extreme to another extreme. And so when I, I speak to women who've done intuitive eating, it feels like they're on that same trajectory. They've gone from one extreme of diet culture and rules to another extreme of completely throwing all the rules out the window and frantically trying to listen to their body. And so we almost feel like if we throw out the rules, we just automatically know what to do. And if we did automatically know what to do, we wouldn't have been in the diet situation to begin with. And when you're an emotional eater, and I would really argue that most of us are emotional eaters. In our society, we use food to distract ourselves from any uncomfortable emotion, from any distract, you know, anything stressful in our life. It is really sort of um, a legal drug, let's say, because we can use food and and process foods to kind of give us this high, this dopamine rush, this sort of boost in mood and distract us from what's really going on. And if we don't understand what's going on and we swing from one extreme to another, we're still really lost. And that's how I felt when I, you know, dropped everything and went to the other extreme. I felt really lost, but what really sort of made me realize something was off was that I didn't feel good in my body. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling healthy. I wasn't feeling vibrant. I felt worse. Like I felt the same way. And I was like, this is not a solution. And that really made me have to start from ground zero. I had to start figuring out what was going on for me. I had to start with baby steps. And, you know, on this journey, I found out more about what was true hunger? What was emotional hunger? Why would I just instantly eat so much food? Um, you know, why, you know, I started to play around with, um, eating in a more nourishing way and, and looking at what nutrition means to me, look, trying out, you know, slowly adding in foods and meals and seeing how I felt and, you know, indulging and seeing how I felt, but it was, always needing to come from a place of feeling like I was making that choice that I wasn't out of control. And, you know, this is something that's important when you're an emotional eater, because you spent so much of your life just feeling out of control around food and in your body. When you go the intuitive route, you're almost just allowing all of those cravings and desires, and maybe it's truly you want to indulge. They're all kind of in this big blob and you're just going with it and you probably won't get the results that you're looking for because you haven't addressed the deeper root issues of what's going on. 
And so emotional eating is a coping mechanism. It's a coping pattern. A coping pattern is something we develop when we feel there isn't a true solution to what we're going through. So this usually develops in childhood. This is what I see with my clients. You know, there are unresolved emotions or unmet needs and there's no solution. And we feel this discomfort and this distress and we go towards food to soothe us, to make us feel good because physiologically food does do that and so if we don't learn how to discern our emotional eating from actually desiring or wanting certain foods we're sort of in this uphill battle so you know emotional eating is the is usually created out of a trauma and a trauma is just an unresolved event it can be something very small or what we consider small you know unmet emotional needs to something bigger like the big t traumas the traumas we really think of um, but you know it's all on a spectrum and so we're using food as this band-aid and then you know it's really hard when we are trying to intuitively eat we're not resolving that deeper layer of our emotional eating to really tune into our body to really know what feels good because what we think feels good and what actually feels good in our body is a disconnect and so that's something with even if you have choice let's say you ate a box of donuts it's going to taste good in the moment but you're probably going to get a tummy ache after and so there's a discernment if you have if you choose to eat it you choose the consequence of it and you're empowered all the way through, even with your tummy ache. But if you choose it and then after you feel crappy and you feel like a failure and you're still not getting, you know, getting ahead, there's something off there. There's a disconnect. And so this is why it's important to have a structure and a flow when you're moving through your emotional eating journey. I'm going to argue for anything in life, we need a balance of a structure and a flow. It's like yin and yang, feminine energy and masculine energy. We need this harmony. We need both. There's not, if we do one or the other, we are living in extremes and that doesn't work out really well. (laughs) You know, um, we want to have this integrative approach. We want to look at everything. And so, when we are working through our emotional eating, we have this structure and this flow. And this is what I discovered for myself. When you go from rigid and restrictive diets, it feels like the structure is just a too much, but that's like a toxic structure. And then when you go into too much flow, it's like a toxic flow. And so we want to find that balance where we are sort of using both together. So we have a structure, but we're using you know, we're getting feedback from ourselves. And this is something I love to tell clients. We want to experiment, to experience change. You're always experimenting. I can guide you. I can see patterns. I, you know, can tell you from all of my experience what I see. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to make that choice for yourself. And I just see this time and time again with clients when I show them how to nourish their bodies, how to connect with their bodies and move through their emotions. They feel good, not because I'm telling them to and they think they should. They genuinely feel at ease. They feel good. They can feel the difference with how they're nourishing themselves. They can feel it in their energy, in you know, their obsession with food or lack of obsession with food. And so that's feedback telling us we're going in the right direction. And so I want to share with you a little bit more about the structure and sort of the flow of how you can move through your emotional eating. And so inside of the Emotional Eating Evolution Program, which is my step-by-step methodology, my program that I guide clients through, Uh, we follow three main phases. And in these phases, this is what helps us to start having a structure and a flow and developing our intuition. Because if we have been disconnected from our bodies pretty much all our lives and our society really tells us to move away from our body, how do we expect ourselves to have this really strong intuition? That's something we develop. And intuition is always growing. We're always learning about it. Yes, we have an innate ability, but if it's been squashed and squelched over time, we have to reconnect back to it. And especially if you've experienced trauma, you know, your body, you're not going to be so connected to your body. We hold trauma and unresolved emotions in our body 
you know, it clogs us up. It's hard to really access what we need to access. And so layer by layer, we connect more and more to ourselves. But through the program, there are touch points that help you connect and really discern what is working for you. So I'm going to start off with the first uh, phase of the program, which is true nourishment and strategic digestion. And so you can hear the word strategic in there. So it is you really starting to learn and discern true from emotional hunger and learning how to truly satisfy your hunger so that you're, you're eating in an abundant way that is going to satisfy you and not trigger binging because you're not in restriction mode. And the meals are created in a way to, so that it's truly satisfying your hunger, but it's also optimizing digestion. We have a body, we have biology, and we need to take that into account. At least I want to take that into account to optimize how we're digesting certain foods, to connect back to our digestion, because this is directly related to our mood. The better we digest, the more optimized our mood is going to be. And that's, you know, the more optimized our mood is, the less likely we're going to binge um, or emotionally eat. I make a discernment here between sort of when we're physically triggered into emotional eating versus true emotional eating where emotions and trauma are involved. But it's important. These are all going to be similar for all of us. One person might eat more than another, but we're going to look at the similar principles around creating meals and digestion, and we're going to tweak things, but there is a pattern that I see with clients and, you know, they can feel it in their body when they're eating, um, following certain guidelines. And of course they can choose not to, but this is how we move forward. And the second area is more around body acceptance. So here, this structure is learning more about your biology, of course, and the rhythms of your body, you know, what's going to work at night. We're all going to be a little bit different, but we, in general, we have certain things that we need to take into account. You know, having an amazing nighttime ritual. We live in a certain world. We are inundated with lots of blue light that trigger our brain that um, don't help us get into deep rest and deep sleep. And that will impact our hormones. But of course, nothing is rigid work. One person's going to go to sleep at a different time than another. But we're looking at all of these holistically so that we can see where we might be triggered into um, our emotional eating, what we're not doing. It's not an intuition. If you've been living a certain way for 30 years and going to bed a certain way, that feels really intuitive to you. That feels really normal to you. But when you try something different, you're going to see how different you feel and you're going to notice a difference. And this is where you experiment to experience change. And so of course I'm seeing this pattern with clients so I can guide you into these different areas. And with body acceptance, a lot of the times when we are on diets and we're emotionally eating, we have this poor relationship to our body. So we need to rebuild our body acceptance and even our true innate worth that is beyond our body. And so this is what we do here so we can reduce those physical and emotional triggers to emotional eating. In the third area, we're really looking at the emotions under the emotional eating pattern. So what triggers are there? What's really creating this pattern for you once we move through the first two phases? Because we're now getting into the true emotions, the traumas, unresolved emotions that are triggering this pattern. We are working with them in the body um, and we are processing them and resolving this pattern so that we can transform it and move forward in a really powerful way that's going to meet our true needs. Because using food as a band-aid, it is not meeting our true needs, but we need to move through that process to see what we um, individually need to move forward. And when we work through these three stages, these three phases, this is how we dissolve the emotional eating pattern. And this is how we start connecting back to food, our body and our emotions. And this is what grows our intuition. This is what will make us intuitive. When we get into the emotional eating pattern and we, you know, dissolve it and we're, we're discerning, yes, I ate enough. Yes, this is true hunger. This is emotional hunger. We're going to have a lot more intuition. We're not, you know, 
it's not like we have thousands of years to sit and really into it about our body. We could, but at the same time, could you try every food? Could you try everything? You know, I find when you say just listen to your body, unless you've had an experience of something, it's really hard to reference. You know, and so it's important to have guidance and be open to experimenting and trying new things. And yes, your body's going to tell you if it likes it or not. You're always going to get that feedback loop. Um, and at the end of the day, when you're in a calm and sort of you're feeling at ease and you're feeling good, that's your indication that you're on the right track. That's your indication that you're moving in a different way because emotional eating is sort of this compulsive way and craving way of eating. And if you still feel like you're in that pattern, you haven't resolved the deeper issues. So this is what I love to do with clients. And this is, this will, what ends up happening is you end up having true intuitive eating. <laughs> it's not just intuitive eating as it's sort of branded out there. It's a true intuitive eating because you're dropping into the deeper layers. You're resolving that coping mechanism and pattern. So you can really feel if you are wanting to indulge, you have choice and autonomy and sovereignty. And this is really what makes you feel at ease, confident, and really at peace in your body and around food. And so if what I've shared with you resonates, if you've had some ahas, let me know below in the comments. And of course, if you are ready to resolve your emotional eating, I would love to invite you to find out more about the Emotional Eating Evolution Program. So like I said, this is my step-by-step -step methodology with lots of support and guidance to help you move through your emotional eating so you can finally feel confident uh, around food and in your body. So you can find out more about that below and you can also book in an emotional eating assessment call. So on the call, we find out more about you, where your goals are and how we can support you in the program. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and I look forward to sharing more with you and I hope you have a great day.